I am here today with Matt Dickhaus from Chef Ami. Thanks for having me, Herb. Uh, great to be here. Part of the startup process for your new for your new venture here. Right? Yes, yes. And um, I'm really glad to have you, man. I love working with you guys and I love your business. Just for our listeners out there, and just so people know, a little bit about Chef Ami. Chef Ami is a meal kit delivery service, very local. It has only two locations right now, the Tampa Bay, Florida area and Gainesville, Florida, where the University of Florida is located and where Matt went to school, where we both went to school. Really reducing the mental load of planning the meals while avoiding pr the processed food trap is sort of the key to losing weight and feeling good. And uh, I mean, locally, it's really only attainable in our areas via Chef on Me because they are locally sourced and they personally deliver every, seal me every single meal kit. And um, today we're going to get into a little bit about how Matt started Chef on Me. So Matt, why don't you kick us off and tell us a little bit you know, in a market that's definitely overcrowded, Blue Apron, Hello Fresh, and a million other competitors, what specific problem did you see that you wanted to fill the gap in with Chef Ami? So really, the the idea sprung from my own personal pain point of just getting off of work, being busy, wanting to eat something that wasn't takeout. You know, the boredom of cooking the same meals that three, four recipes that you might have in your in your database and your knowledge of something, your go-to meals, they get old. And so my wife and I, girlfriend at the time, were just having that that trouble, you know, what are we gonna do for dinner? How do we fix this? How do we keep eating healthy without, you know, sacrificing uh, the time? And there were a couple of meal kits out there, uh, like you said, Blue Apron, HelloFresh, but they just, the quality wasn't there. A lot of waste with their packaging and and just just ingredients that I didn't really want to be using. I was using them because I would use them because they were there, but they weren't, you know, they weren't fresh. How, just for our listeners, how does Chef on Me truly differ? How, like, what would you say is like, what makes you guys truly different from other meals, meal preps? I think that we don't, we, we don't have a, a clear cut uh, price margin that we're trying to hit with our with our ingredients we're not cutting out the good and expensive ingredients because we need to make a certain you know margin on profit we include meals that we like and we use ingredients we like we use a lot of avocados we use a lot of fresh herbs and basil uh, we use high quality meats and steaks and salmon and scallops because it's delicious and you know that's the primary primary thing we're going for is something that tastes good, something that people are going to want to eat. And I think one of the biggest things we do is by being local, we can use those those ingredients, those fragile ingredients like the, the basil, the cilantro, the thyme, and get it to your house so fast that it, it doesn't have time to spoil. Whereas, you know, some of the other companies are shipping it across the country. And so they just don't, uh, they aren't able to, to keep it as fresh and use those, those different ingredients. I like that word fragile. That that's a that's a good description of uh, some of those herbs and, I mean, heck, even avocados, yeah. big time. So, so you, you you mentioned the word fresh, and fresh is one of those words that gets abused in marketing by marketing people like me. And you know, I've tried a lot of those kits you talked about. Um, you know, Blue Apron, Hello Fresh, a few others, and they all claim to be super fresh. Right. Um, but the ones I've got, I mean, they arrive frozen via UPS or FedEx. When you, you know, you talked a little bit about um, what you guys do, but what does the food actually look like when it arrives at the house? So that's a, that's another differentiator, I think, is we we, we have a, a small team of people who really care about, you know, the process, about treating the, the food with care. And so we, we hand label and hand pack every single ingredient that goes into that bag. So it's all, you know, kept at 40 degrees. We don't, have, nothing's frozen. Everything's fresh, no preservatives, all natural ingredients. And we're actually packing that stuff on Monday in our facility right here in town and delivering it to your doorstep the next day. So in 24 hours, it's going from, you know, our our acquisition of that ingredient to being on your dinner plate. One question I got to ask, um, because my wife loves these, my kids love these, but where where do all the great little cooking tips come from? I know personally that I'm a, I'm, I'm a much better cook now and because of the things I've learned just from your recipe cards and sure. the little tips you guys put out there. Yeah. I mean, those are fun. It's, that's part of kind of what we like to do is train people to be better cooks, right? So it's easy to follow our instructions, you know, step by step and you get a good meal at the end. It's, it's created for a novice cook. 
If you're a more advanced cook, you know, you can add your own touches to it, but kind of part of cooking with us is an education in, in cooking and in becoming more proficient and more confident in your own skills. So, you know, my wife and I took cooking lessons together when we first started our class, our uh, company, and we still take cooking classes when we travel, for example, you know, we like to watch different shows on, on Food Network and we, we follow bloggers and we just kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of one of our hobbies. And so we try to pass those on to our customers. So it's just stuff, you know, my wife and I have learned over, over time that we like to, that we found helpful and we want to share with our, our, our customers. I mean, you mentioned travel and you guys have some really incredible, like very diverse recipes in there. Like what are some of the places that you guys have traveled that have influenced the recipes you guys send to you know, your customers? My wife is Colombian, so we spent some time down in South America. So that's definitely got some influence for us. Our 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 chef that taught us everything we know is from France, um, and so a lot of a lot of influence from there. We've actually been back to Lyon and Paris two or three times, and and done some cooking classes over there. Um, we just got back from Italy. And we did a few pasta making and cooking classes there as well. And just exploring, you know, the different cuisines in their natural habitat, if you will. It's, it's done very differently when you go to the source than, than when it's brought back over to the United States. And so, you know, that's something we're always looking out for on any of our travels to, to kind of bring back some of those flavors to, to the dinner plates here in town. And the authentic way to tease them out. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, Leon, nice. Well... I'll tell you one of the other things that, you know, I've seen a lot of people talk about this online. I've seen people, um, you know, you know, comment via email to to into your inbox. But the fact that you guys deliver personally means that there is just a huge reduction in waste because after you guys deliver our boxes or when you guys deliver our boxes, you come and pick up the previous boxes and you recycle and reuse so much material. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just something I see. There's, there's so much waste in our economy right now with the, you know, the Amazons and FedEx is shipping things across the country. Like nothing is sourced locally anymore. It's coming from overseas or it's coming from across the state or across the country. And along the way, there's just a lot of waste that, that goes into that. And there's no reason food needs to be like that. So, yeah, that's one of the ways that we pass on our, uh, you know, we're able to, to not only benefit the customer through lower prices, but also, um, you know, have a, a, a lower impact on our carbon footprint. So we pick up our boxes, are able to be reused two to three times. Everything in the packaging is actually reused. The the foil liners we use about 10 times, the gel packs 30 to 40 times. And and it really, yeah, I mean, you gotta look at the, the amount of waste that's coming from, from sending food across the country is substantial, not just in the emissions, but also just all the packaging. And so we really wanted to make a difference by, by Picking it up, hand pickup, hand delivery, and then reusing that packaging is is a huge a huge savings for everyone. That's important. Definitely, I'm sure it's not cheap. You know, you know, maintaining all the you know those drivers and delivering anything. But I appreciate personally that you guys do that. Yeah, it's like they say the three R's: reduce, re- reuse, and recycle. Like reducing yeah. is first, reusing. You know, so so we're not. We're not. We're, we're reducing and we're reusing. You know, it's 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 it makes a big difference. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, you know, in terms of supporting local businesses, um, one of the things I love that you guys do is you buy from some great farms and you guys work with some great vendors locally. I love Swallowtail Farms. Been to several farm to tables out there, um, bought food from them. What other local farms and local suppliers will Chef Ami customers be enjoying? Yeah, we, we like to work with Swallowtail. They're great. Um, we get a lot of our uh, a lot of eggs actually from them. So they have a great program for that. And then Frog Song Organics does a great job. They have a huge capacity. You know, John is is a genius when it comes to farming, fully sustainable. Um, I think it's permaculture out there. They have like the the farm animals that fertilize the, the crops and then the crops feed the animals. And it's really amazing out in Hawthorne. And they're actually got some farm to table series that they've been doing recently as well. Not quite as well marketed as Swallowtail, um, but they do a really good job. And then he sources from Alachua, what's it called? John sources from two or three different 
farms in the area as well. So when we're buying from him, we're, we're buying from various farms throughout the town. Nice. And then our beef actually is coming right from Ocala. There's a, a really cool farm there called Adina. And they have, I think, 90,000 acres where they are growing the you know, growing the cattle, raising it, pasturing it, butchering it, processing it all on site, all grass fed, grass finished, free range cattle. So our beef and our steaks are coming right from Ocala, which is pretty cool. Yeah, no kidding. I know. Food quality. I mean, the beef and the fish. Um, where do you guys get your fish from? The fish is phenomenal. The fish we're getting, it's typically out of uh, Hudson, Florida. So it's called Whitney Seafood. They're an importer. And it's I mean, yeah, this comes from all of them. Well, can you tell, tell me a little bit about how you guys give back to the community in terms of uh, feeding people that are underprivileged or struggle to find healthy meals? Um, I know you guys work with several different food banks and provide meals. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that was um, when I first started this business, I had moved here from Columbia, uh, South America, actually. And that was the first time I had ever experienced true pro poverty firsthand. And I saw a lot of kids, you know, on the street begging and going without food. And so that was something I wanted to incorporate into our business was really f giving back to particularly children uh, who are not having enough food. So for every meal that you cook with us, we donate a meal to either Feeding Tampa Bay or Feeding Florida or um, Feeding Florida or Bread of the Mighty. And so that way, you know, when you're enjoying your food, you know that you're doing a little bit of good as well and helping to, to sustain and provide some nourishments for some children in the area as well. Yeah, yeah. you guys are uh, having a pretty tremendous impact. So in that way, let's talk about your customers a little bit, because um, I know you guys get a lot of customers, you know, commenting um, about how much they enjoy you guys. But um, what is, what is some of your customer? What do your customers say that they enjoy the most or they appreciate the most about Chef on Me? Number one thing everyone says is the freshness. Like I know, like you said, you know, it's it's overused. It's you see it everywhere now in every menu and every you know marketing pamphlet everywhere. Fresh. But it really is fresh. I mean, you can you open the bag and you see that somebody has taken a lot of care in choosing that 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 produce for you. You know, we're we're you're trusting our customers are trusting us to do their shopping for them, and so we're extremely selective in what we send out. and And that's the number one thing: the freshness and the flavors. I mean, it's it's not a diet. It's not a fad. It's not the focus is fresh and delicious. You know. If you can feed people healthy food and make it taste good, it's sustainable. And that's what people like about it is that they don't, they feel, they don't feel bad about eating it and they enjoy eating it. So, and they're learning something while they're cooking. So. Yes. Well, and you talked about shopping. Um, you know, not only do you, are you saving people, you know, just the mental load of having to figure out what to eat, but then they have to go out and buy it too. But, you know, we've talked about this. You're not the cheapest service out there. And that's probably a good thing considering how, you know, what the quality is like. But what makes someone like who would you say is like a perfect fit customer for Chef on Me? Like what is like what's the qualities of that person? Typically, it's it's going to be someone who it's a dual income household with young children. So working husband, working wife, you know, they both have their careers. They both have busy days. Um, they have young children at home, typically like I'd say under seven or eight, because once they get above that age, they become extremely picky and they're eating more. And so usually the younger kids, the parents have a nice meal that they cook after a busy day at work. You know, they don't have to think about, have the daily conversation. What do you want to do for dinner? I don't know. What do you want to do? Had that about a thousand times. And then end up getting, you know, some greasy overpriced takeout and feeling bad about what they've eaten and not, not being healthy. So typically it's, it's, it's that kind of a, a couple, you know, two meals, two serving meals, the young kids are eating you know, something else, something simple. And then, and then, you know, somebody who likes to cook is also typically, you have to enjoy cooking. You know, it's not a replacement for cooking. You got to do the work. You got to enjoy cooking. It's not that much work though. I mean, we knocked them out in 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I yeah, mean, it's, not, it's, it's not bad. It's if, fun. If, if you don't, if you don't mind doing a little bit of work, it's totally worth it. And it's easier than cooking on your own, but uh, it's not, you know, just heat, heat and serve is not what we're selling because it just... It's never as good. Yeah. I mean, and by the time I go to Publix, you know, oftentimes I'm spending, you know, a good bit of money 
for a similar meal. So yeah. uh, if not more. And you buy a lot of erroneous items along the way. That's another feedback we get a lot of is we're saving people money because they're not picking up things they don't need. You go to the grocery store, you know, I'm going to make this recipe. And then you say, oh, BOGO wine, BOGO peanut butter, BOGO chips. (laughs) And you get all these other things and it's tempting and you're spending money on it and you're eating stuff you shouldn't be maybe. Yeah. Or you buy, you know, you buy a whole bunch of scallions when you need two. Sure. Yeah. So so the food waste as well. Yeah. I mean, food waste is definitely a thing.